Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So this video, I'm going to do the two problems, number 22 and 23 on page 70, to help you prepare for problem, for practice D homework. So we already did the first two, and I'll do those again at the end, if you wish. But for those of you guys who are already understanding number 19 and 20, or rather 2021, I'm gonna go ahead and start with 22. So as I said to you guys, please, please, please feel comfortable rereading a problem. This one looks like a whole bunch of words. So it's a good idea to reread it. But let's read it the first time. A car starts from rest and travels for five seconds with a uniform acceleration of positive 1.5 meters per second squared. Then the driver applies the, brake, the brakes, starting to brake, causing a uniform acceleration of negative 2.5 meters per second squared. Makes sense? Negative, so he's slowing down if he's going in the positive direction. Maybe he's going north or he's going east. Then the brakes are applied for three seconds. If the brakes are applied for three seconds, how fast is the car going at the end of the braking period and how far has it gone? All right, so the first thing we want to do is translate it. Translate it means rewrite it all, but in, in algebra. Algebra is so much easier than English. Not that English is hard, but algebra is super easy. So the first thing it says, it tells you the car starts from rest. So the rest means that it's not moving. So the V initial is zero, not moving. And then it travels for five seconds. So the delta T is five seconds. I'm gonna put sec because my S's I know aren't very clear. Then he applies the brakes, or I'm sorry, with uniform acceleration of, there it is, plus, 1.5 meters per second squared. So he's speeding up meters per second squared. All right, then he applies brakes. So something different happens now. So that's like the first part of the problem. Then there's a second part of the problem. So now he's going to brake at a different acceleration. I'm gonna call this one A1 and the next one A2. A2 is gonna be negative 2.0 meters per second squared. And then he applies it for three seconds. So the delta T, this time I'm gonna call delta T2, is three seconds, three seconds. So the other one is delta T1. And we wanna know how fast is it going? So what is the V final here? The V final, you can say V final final or V2. V2 is V final final final. How fast is it going and what's the displacement? I'm gonna put here total. What's the displacement total? So that's what we wanna figure out. All right, so like the first proof that we went through, we know that V final is equal to V initial plus A delta T. This is the one that hopefully is somewhat intuitive as our driver Jasmine was accelerating five, right over here, if she was accelerating five miles per hour per hour. I'm gonna put here hour squared, or hour per hour is hour squared. And let's say she went for two hours, two hours. So one of the hours cancels out and I end up with miles per hour. And I add that to how much, how fast she was going to begin with. And that would be your final velocity. All right, so let's plug it in. Here we've got the final is gonna be the initial. Oh, that's just zero, if I can just, Say that's zero, so I end up with just A delta T. A is 1.5 meters per second squared, and T is five seconds. Five seconds, I'm gonna over one. Now I wanna make sure you guys see why my seconds cancel out. One of my seconds cancel out, why is that? Let's put it over here. Meters per second squared times second. If you still don't see it, let's rewrite this as meters times seconds over seconds times seconds. Now you can see that one of your seconds cancel out and you end up with meters per second. Cool, so we know. Five times 1.5, what's that? Five times 1.5, okay, is seven and a half, 7.5. So we end up with 7.5 meters per second is our V final. So that's the V final of the first part. Okay, V final of the first part is 7.5 meters per second. Well, if that's the case, then that must be the V initial for the second part. V initial is where you ended up, 7.5 meters per second. So 
So we know what the initial is on that part. So let's figure out what the final, final part is. I got V final is V initial plus A delta T. So now I want the second part. So V initial second and my acceleration second part and my delta T second part. Let's do that. So V initial is 7.5 meters per second plus my acceleration. It's a negative 2.0 meters per second squared. And that I have to multiply by my time, which is three seconds, three seconds. All right, so one of my seconds cancels out here and I end up with meters per second and meters per second. So 7.5, I'm sorry, negative two times three is six. So I end up with 7.5 meters per second. And then this is minus two times three is minus six meters per second. So I end up with one and a half meters per second. One and a half meters per second. One and a half meters per second. All right, and this is number 22. Number 22. We're going the same direction, so you better tell me it's a ve vector, so it's plus, plus 1.5 meters per second. Okay, so that's my final, final velocity, but now the question is, what is my displacement? So the total displacement. So I'm going to have to figure out what the displacement is for the first part, because there's a different velocity and different acceleration, and what my displacement is for the second part. Then I can add them up. Okay, so let's do the first part. Delta x, now there are different formulas you can use. One of the formulas you can use is delta x is v initial delta t plus a over 2 delta t squared. Okay, or maybe you prefer V initial delta T plus one half times A times delta T squared. Okay, same thing. So let's do that. Now we want the first part. So we're gonna have the first part for V initial first and then initial uh, acceleration and the first time frame. Well, the first velocity is zero. So this whole term goes to zero. So now we can just say, okay, it's one half times A, the first part, times delta T, the first part squared. Okay, so let's do that. One half, the first acceleration was 1.5, 1.5, meters per second squared times the time squared. The time here is, the first part was five seconds. I'm gonna say five seconds squared. I want to make sure you guys see that the units cancel out. Let me rewrite this. One half times 1.5 meters per second squared. And five squared, let's see here, five times five is 25. So I got 25 and seconds is squared. So you're, sec you're squaring both sides. So five seconds times five seconds is 25 seconds squared. Okay, so now my second squared cancel out, yay. So I have one half times 1.5 times 25. Let me get my calculator out here. Clear. All right, 0.5 I'm going to do for one half times 1.5 times 25. And I get 18.75, 18.75 meters. So that's my first part. My first part is 18.75 meters. Now we're going to do the second part. Let's use the same equation. You don't have to, we have another equation for delta x. But let's say you chose to use the same equation. Go up here. Delta x is vi, the second part, delta t, the second part, plus I'm gonna put one half times the acceleration of the second part, and delta t, second part, squared. Okay, now the first term is not zero. We need to go with the first part. The initial part, Oh, the second part we wrote down here is 7.5. Remember that that was the same thing as the final of the first part. First part of the problem. So we put that in there. 7.5 meters per second. And how many seconds was the second part? The second section of the problem? Three seconds. Three seconds. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out my S's because I don't want you to think it's a five. All right. Plus one half. Now my acceleration here is negative negative 2.0 meters per second squared. And I have to square this last part, three seconds squared. So let me rewrite the second part here. Oh, well actually let's do this. 
what's one half times two? This part right here, that gives me a negative one, huh? So negative one, right here, negative one meters per second squared. And then I have nine seconds squared. So cancel out those two parts. And I end up with this part here is going to be minus nine meters. So whatever this is, 7.5 times three, I just did it's 22 and a half, 22.5 meters minus nine is equal to 13 and a half, 13 and a half meters. Okay, so we got the second part. So 13 and a half was the second part, 13 and a half meters. Now we can add them up. Now here's a sigma. Sigma just means we're adding them up. You add these two numbers up and you get 32.25 meters. 32.25 meters, significant figures, and it's just 32. So there's our final, final displacement. All right, so a little review here. What do we do? First thing most important is we translate the problem. I wrote down what V initial is and how long they were going at this acceleration. Then we use the V finals equal to VI plus A delta T and we figured out what the final, what the velocity was at the end of those five seconds, which is the initial velocity on the next part. On the next part, he's decelerating. It means a negative acceleration, 2.0 meters per second squared, and he does it for three seconds. Well, it could have been she does it if it was Jasmine still driving. So we do the same equation to figure out what the velocity was, and we figured out now she's down to 1.5 meters per second. So that is the actual final, final, final velocity. And then we had to figure out what the displacement was. So displacement, we chose to use the equation vi delta t plus a over two delta t squared. It's not the only one that's there though, it's not the only way. Anyway, if you use this one, then we end up with 13.5 meters per second. I'm sorry, meters, just meters, displacement. Displacement, total displacement. Okay, last problem here. A boy is sledding down a hill. I need more space for this one. Let's do this one. Make sure you can read it. A boy is sledding down a hill, accelerates at 1.4 meters per second squared. If he starts from rest, ooh, there is your clue, the initial velocity, what distance would he reach at a speed of 7.0 meters per second? Okay, so let's write down what we know. There it is. We know that he starts from rest. That means V initial has got to be zero. And we know that the acceleration is 1.4 meters per second squared. Pretty good guess that it's positive because he's sliding down, kind of go faster with gravity. We'll get to that next chapter. All right, and we know that the V final is 7.00 meters per second. And we want to know what distance. So what distance did he go? That's the question. What distance did he go? Okay, I'm gonna move this heavy book out of the way. All right, so now we can look at our other equations. One of the equations that we that we could have used also with the last problem, but we didn't, might be helpful here. V squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2A delta X plus 2A delta X. Now notice, you know what VF is, right? They tell us what VF is. You know what VI is. It's zero, they tell us. And we know what the acceleration is. The only thing we don't know is delta X, which is what we want to know. So using algebra one, we're just going to move things around to isolate delta x. Let's see, what's the first thing we can do? All this clumped is multiplied together, so not that one. Let's subtract the i squared to both sides. If we subtracted both, uh, both sides, now we have the final squared minus the initial squared is equal to 2a delta x. Okay, getting closer. Now I have 2a multiplied to delta x, so let's divide both sides 2a. All right, so now my two a's cancel out, and I'm going to rewrite this. Delta x, therefore, is v final squared minus v initial squared all over 2a. Now I'm going to make sure that the units work out. So let's, let's see what happens here. All right, so v initial is zero, so that's nice. So right now I'm just going to go, boop, that goes away, only because it's zero. So what do I have? I have v final squared all over 2a. Now that's only true because v initial squared is zero. 
All right, so let's do that. V final 7.00 meters per second, per second, and all that squared, divided by two times the acceleration. Acceleration is 1.4 meters per second squared. So here it's meters per second all squared. Let me rewrite that. Seven squared is 49. Seven times seven is 49. So I have meters squared all over second squared. And in this case here, well, I happen to know that 1.4 times 2 is 2.8. I got meters per second squared. Let's say you're still not seeing it, okay? Just do it on the side. Here we go. We have meters squared over second squared divided by meters per second squared. Remember when you divide fractions, it's the same thing as multiplying its inverse. So that's equal to meters squared over second squared times, now we invert the second fraction, second squared all over meters. So my second squared cancels out and I have two meters and one meter downstairs. So let's see, you still don't see it. I'm gonna go meters times meters over meters. All right, now I see that one of my meters cancel out and I end up with only with meters, phew. And that's what I want because Displacement, here is meters. So let's figure this out. 4.9, 4.9 divided by 2.8 is 1.75. Whoop, whoop. That's our key. Did I do a number wrong here? 49, 2.8. 49.2.8. Okay, so I got what did I get here? 1.75. 1.75 meters, and this is number 23. Something went wrong here. What did we do wrong here? Ah, that's our key. Minus zero. 49. Did I, oh, that's what's wrong. Look at my calculator. <laughs> All right. 49 divided by, this is why I always do it more than once. 49 divided by 2.8 is 17.5. Woohoo. So I check here. It's 17.5. And there we go. 17.5. Right. This, this video is long enough. So if you want me to continue with number 20 and 21, I'll do that now if you want, because we did that in class, but I'll do it just in case you want it. So as a review, they gave us that it was at rest. They told us acceleration. They told us the final velocity and we want to know what the displacement is. And I chose to use this equation, but first I had to isolate to solve for Delta X. All I did was move the V initial squared to both sides. And then I divided by two A. And I plug it in and I make sure you type it in right in the calculator. All right, so now I'll go to the top in case somebody still wants that one. The very first one, which is number 20. A car is traveling seven meters per second and accelerates at a rate of 0.8 meters per second squared for an interval of two seconds. And they wanna know what the final is. Okay, let me write that down here. Traveling, let's see, V initial, you guys can see that big enough. V initial is plus 7.0 meters per second. And then we have acceleration of plus 0.80 meters per second squared. And we know delta T. Delta T is 2.0 seconds. And we want to know what V final is. What's V final? All right. So the first one that we proved was V final is equal to V initial plus A delta T. And V initial is, we can just plug it in here, 7.0 meters per second. Plus here's our acceleration, 0.8 meters per second squared. And I multiply by the time, two second. I wanna make sure you guys see that this second cancels out with one of the seconds here and end up meters per second. All right, so I happen to know that 8 plus 8 is 16, so I know that 2 times 0.8 is 1.6 meters per second plus 7.0 meters per second. So therefore, I add those two up and I get B final is 7 plus 1, 8.6 meters per second. And since it's a vector, I have to know what direction it's going in, and it told me it's going to the right or north and that's the same direction your V final is in. Okay, last one, number 21. Let's see, I guess I'll start with the fresh piece of paper here. 
All right, number 21. Hope you can see that. The car accelerates from rest. Okay, that's our first clue. It starts at not moving, so it's zero. And it accelerates. So accelerating is negative 3.00 meter per second. So if it's not moving and it's accelerating in the negative direction, it must be going south or west. All right, now it wants to know what's the final velocity at the end of five seconds. So what's the final velocity if the time frame is five seconds? I put seconds. That's the first question. Then it wants to know what's the displacement. That's the next question it wants to know. All right, so it looks like the first part it's just like the other problem we just did. So V final is equal to V initial plus A delta T. So let's plug it in, V initial. Oh, that's just zero. I can say bye-bye to that part. So I have A delta T. A is negative 3.00 meters per second squared. And I multiply that to five seconds. Okay, and hopefully by now you know that this second cancels with one of those. So I end up with meters per second. So three times five is 15, there's a negative, so it's negative 15 meters per second. That's my, that's my final velocity, final velocity. Now it wants to know what delta x is. Hmm, what's the delta x? All right, we have different options, lots of different options. I'm gonna go with the one we were just doing. Delta x is v initial delta t plus one half a delta t squared. I chose that one only because V I is zero. So that just brings it down to one half times A delta T squared. All right, so one half, what's A here? A is negative, negative three meters per second squared. Okay, here, one half times that. Times the time squared, my time is five, five second and a half to square it. I'm gonna write here, what's five seconds times five seconds? 25 seconds squared. All right, I'm gonna rewrite that. One half times negative three meters per second squared times 25 seconds squared, and my second squared cancels out. Phew, because then I'm left with meters, which is good because we're talking displacement here. So now I got 25 times three, which I know is 75, and then 75, divided by two is 37.5 meters. And there you have it. So in the next one, I will do the problems for practice E, for practice E. So see you on the next side.